Hey guys, welcome back to the Bond Report. This is Chris, aka the Beard of Blowfell. So we're continuing on with Gen Z versus James Bond. And what does that mean? Well, you're asking a good question. Uh, I'm here today, of course, with my wonderful daughter, Alexis. She's going to be helping us out today. And I really wanted to kind of dive in with this one. We're doing From Russia With Love. Number two, this is our second film. And we're going to be going over a couple different questions today and finding out what about this film stood out to her, maybe made her cringe a little bit, and definitely made her smile. So we're going to jump right in. Alexis, would you like to say hello? Hi, guys. <laughs> Keep it simple. All right, guys. And in case you are curious about how you can support the channel, be sure to check out the Bond Report merch store. I'll have a link down below. She is actually wearing my From Russia With Love Sick, which is Spectre Island Chopper Core shirt. <laughs> I'm wearing my classic Bond Report, but we have so many other options, including the Baja. Just came out recently with the Tanaka's ninja school training gear so there's all kinds of options i design all of these myself also if you're having fun today and you like the video please consider subscribing and i always appreciate a thumbs up okay let's get into this okay alexis so given now that this is your second film what similarities are you noticing between the two films it's still about a spy <laughs> it is about a spy yes <laughs> <laughs> you know and just the way that it's filmed is still very similar it's still and I, again this is i think going to be with all of the bond movies it's very um action forward and very like guns and spies and girls and <laughs> <laughs> yes all yes, of the action-y like boom, boom, boom things um it was less 60s i will say oh okay I think just like we didn't see as much like furniture and like living quarters necessarily as we did in the first one mm. because they were like living in Dr. No's like underground, uh, yes. you know, and then this one, it was more like always on the go. Mm -hmm. So from vehicle to vehicle. Right. I just noticed that more like it just seemed a little bit less 60s, I think, because we saw a little bit less people because we already have a grasp of like who everyone is to a point. Mm -hmm. And it was on a train. And I feel like trains, ah. you know, they just don't really have like an era. They're just like timeless. So did that's fun. Did you notice what train it was? Or are you familiar with that train? I'm not familiar with trains. So for all of you at home that may not know this as well, that was actually the Orient Express. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard of the book or the story? Uh, there's actually a movie as well, Murder on the Orient Express. Yeah, I've heard of that. It was a very big deal. The Orient Express was a big train to begin with. Yeah. Um, and so it was used in a lot of different films and a lot of different stories. But I was, I always like to think, for myself at least, that this adventure and the death of Karim Bay, uh, spoilers, <laughs> <laughs> and Red Grant, that it's kind of like that's where they may have pulled some of the the inspiration. I'm not yeah. sure. I may have to actually fact check that because and I know, I know somebody at home is going to fact check me because it could be a situation where the murder on the Orient Express murder on the Orient Express came out beforehand. Well, for those fact checkers out there, let us know down in the comments. Yes, yes, <laughs> you're on it. Okay, all right. Question number two. So, what shocked you the most about this film? What was that moment that really kind of was like, oh, absolutely not. Probably towards the end of the movie where Tatiana um, betrayed Colonel Kleb and oh. was like, like helped Bond escape and like shot her. And like, I just wasn't expecting that. I was like, wait, she's working with them. And that was kind of my moment where I was like, what is going on? Yeah. Yeah. It, and it does surprise you because you're like, oh, she's going to fall right back into that that kind of sheepish character yeah. that she, you kind of see her get that way with Kleb and that initial interview mm -hmm. and Kleb kind of slaps her on the chair and says, you know, you will be shot. And she smacks the edge of the chair and you can kind of see Tatiana like, yeah, yes, yes ma'am. She like gets back into line. Yeah. Think. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, no. And, and that was a, a cool twist at the end because she had bond. Yeah. She had him. I mean, dead to rights. I mean, it, it one more second 
at any at any second she could have pulled the trigger and oh yeah like she did not have to like she had no loyalties to him and i think that's why it shocked me so much because mm -hmm. i think that like there's a big stereotype at least that like russians especially back then are very like tied to family and i think someone even says in the film like you know blood is everything or blood is the most loyal or ah uh, yes, yes 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 when he says it about his son yeah he's talking about yeah kareem bay was talking about his children mm -hmm. uh the best oh. the best allies are blood or something yeah like something that. i can't remember the exact line. yeah somebody will know that put that down in the comments for us i want to hear that but no so like you know, that was kind of, like, the precedent in the movie, so I was like, oh, like, she's not gonna, like, save him. Like, she's gonna be like, no, like, yeah, you're gonna get shot. Right. <laughs> and right. then she saves him at the last minute, it's kind of cool because it's like, oh, it is that kind of, like, twist. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, I know we talked about this in the last video, when we were talking about Dr. No, mm -hmm. and I told you you were gonna meet Major Boothroyd. Yes. And I said, you're gonna meet the real Major Boothroyd in the next film. So, in this film, when Bond gets his gear, mm -hmm. right? We finally see him with Q. That is what his name is. His name is Q. He is played by the actor Desmond Llewellyn. Desmond Llewellyn, Llewellyn would go on to play him for multiple decades. Oh, so wow. you're going to see him a lot as the movies go on. And it's really cool to see how they build a relationship and how he builds a relationship across actors. But for this scene, when Bond gets the briefcase, mm -hmm. tell me about that. What did you think about the briefcase as like a gadget and like a a tool that he had to use like out in the adventure? Like, what did you think of that whole thing? Because I happen to have a briefcase handy. <laughs> so I thought it was nifty, honestly. Um, I was wondering, probably like halfway through the movie, I was like, hmm, they've not used that briefcase yet. I wonder how that's going to like tie into everything. And I knew that it was like, they made such a big deal about the gold coins. So I was like, that's going to tie into it somehow. I was just kind of like waiting to see how it would all play out and everything. I think that it was super smart the way that they used it, like utilized it. Right. Well, I love the fact that not only does he have ammunition for his gun, it's got a rifle inside of it. Then it's also got the knife. Mm -hmm. It's got the gold. It's got the talcum powder, which is the canister for, you know, the uh, the tear gas that he gets Red Grant with, which I love that moment. But it's I think it was fun because there wasn't a single thing inside that case that he didn't utilize in the film. Yeah. They didn't leave anything to chance. It was like, no, we're telling you all of these things. It's all going to come into play. And that's what I loved about that gadget itself. It's actually supposed to be, well, not supposed to be. It is. It's actually one of the most famous kind of gadgets and toys that they've ever made. They've made toys of the attache case. It's so expensive. <laughs> it's so hard to find some of them, too. It's just a really great plot device for this film that helped set a standard if you will and again you're going to see that as we go on as well but i just wanted to get your opinion on that because it is a cool piece yeah i loved how it, there was things on the inside of the briefcase and how there was things even on just the opening and then how there was that knife on the outside because without him being able to get that knife he would have been toast from oh, yeah. red grant oh yeah he had him with the what do you think of grant's like i was not expecting that his little like floss dude mm -hmm. with the watch that was very clever did that throw you off in the beginning when you're like... Yeah, a little bit. I just wasn't expecting it. <laughs> yeah. So far, so good. She hasn't had a meltdown. <laughs> I haven't heard any, like, crazy sarcasm come out of her mouth yet. We, yet. Got, two, we got two more questions. <laughs> yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is also the first time in the film franchise that we see my team, Spectre. <laughs> we see Spectre for the first time. So what did you think of, like, the criminal organization itself? And individually, like, tell me about the characters. I mean, which one kind of stood out to you more? We've got Kronstein, who was, like, he was the planner. We've got Rosa Club. Mm -hmm. Spectre brought her in from Russia. Right. Which, if you guys haven't seen my video about Rosa Club, stop this video later and go check that one out. I go a full background on her, and you'll learn about how dark and evil she really was. Ooh, talk about a sinister woman. But we've also got 
so there's there's the two big ones there um then we've got red grant of course mm -hmm. we've got blofeld i mean it's it's stacked with villains here i think what it's think? cool in this film because you like kind of see them especially specter and blofeld mm -hmm. um i do kind of like how you don't see his face like when you enter when he gets introduced you only see like his torso and then of course he's holding a cat which i love yep. it's an all-white cat of course of course <laughs> that's where it comes from yeah that's where like all the jokes of like the white cat evil villain it comes from this film that's awesome yeah um but now i love that introduction of him especially because like what he's saying like he means business and you can tell and like i like that he the first interaction you see with blofeld and rosa he refers to her as five mm -hmm. and i thought that, that was kind of cool yeah. um it almost takes me back to like kids next door but oh that's a whole other story <laughs> just because they're labeled like one through five and... oh okay but that's it's past your time <laughs> <laughs> now i feel old <laughs> sometimes the old ways are the best. I like how they made... I don't know if I like it. I just think it's interesting that they made Rosa out to be this hardcore supervillain, like, expert at torture. And then I feel like she kind of just went out easy. Some say that. Yeah, it, it, was, it was tricky because, I mean, really, if you think about it, Bond didn't kill her. Right. Bond was kind of struggling there because, I mean, she had the famous blade in the shoe, which actually was a real spy. That was a real spy thing that oh, was really? used. Yeah, they would put uh, ricin poison and various venoms, but they actually have some of them where they come out. But no, the shoe was a, that was documented as being a real spy weapon because they could retract the blade and deploy it with by clicking the side of the foot. And it would have a poison on it. And that's how they could just walk up and kick somebody and and disappear into a crowd. Because it was really dangerous. And that's why Bond was like, he had the chair on her, like, trying to hold her back. Yeah. But as you could tell, he didn't really have a game plan. No, he was just trying to, like, buy time. Yeah. Thankfully, Tanya kind of fell in love with him. And she kind of became the hero. Oh, yeah. And killed the villain, which only happens... Maybe another time. We won't talk about that yet. That's for another film. Okay, so what about, like, Kronstein? What did you think of him as being, like, the planner and the master chess player? And, like, what did you get from him? I kind of saw right, right through him, honestly. Yeah. I was kind of like, mm, I don't know about this guy. I don't know why. There's nothing that he did or said necessarily that I was like, ooh, like, that doesn't line up. It was. I was just kind of like, he's not the one who calls the shots. You know, like, yeah. he's not... I don't know. I just kind of saw through the whole like facade of it because I was like, nah, she's behind it. Okay. And I love how they like gave her credit for that too. Cause you see a scene with Spectre um, kind of towards the middle of the movie with Kronstein and Rosa and Rosa is thinking that like, she's going to die. Mm -hmm. And then all, and then cause he's telling them like, no, like I wasn't the one who failed this and like trying to make himself look good. And I was like, mm. and then they killed him. And I was like, Oh, like recognition, like, you know, yeah. and I thought that, that was cool, especially for the time, because I mean, we're still in only 1964. Like, that's not a thing. Back then, women were just like pretty and hot and bimbos and, you know, like to a point. <laughs> we, we had a few of those across the years. Like, <laughs> maybe. But no, no, I, get it. I thought it was cool, though, how they really like implemented her into okay. it. Okay. And then what about Red Grant? I had mixed feelings about him just okay. because we see him, but he never speaks until the first time um, when he meets with Bond. Mm -hmm. And even then, you only hear him for like a second, and then they have to get on the train, and he's kind of muffled. And so I don't know. I think that that threw me off because usually when characters are introduced, they like say their name or they're in a conversation or something. He kind of just looks like a stalker for the first half of the movie. Right. <laughs> he's just like he's looking out for Bond and just like I'm gonna keep you alive today. Right. Tomorrow, <laughs> you're mine. <laughs> I get it. No, it's it's a weird dynamic that they give him um, mm -hmm. because he is he's stalking him because he needs him, and right. he tell he explains that to Bond that basically Bond hand delivered the lecture to him. Yeah, on the train. 
So it's it's a weird thing. And you said that you're like, why do I know him? Yeah, I did. I like feel like I recognize the actor, but I like can't place it. Take a look at that magazine right there, the magazine cover. That's him. It's not him. It's not him? That's Daniel Craig. Okay. Daniel Craig has been, they, there's been countless people say out on the internet that Red Grant and Daniel Craig looked and acted so much alike that Craig actually used Red Grant as a blueprint for his version of James Bond. Oh, really? So when we get to Daniel Craig's James Bond, I'd be curious to talk to you about that and find out if you think, does he still remind you of Grant? Because some people say that that's still a thing. That's interesting. It is. It's very, it's very interesting. <laughs> okay. So to wrap this up, mm -hmm. um, kind of final question here. How, what did you think about like the locations of this film? Because we travel quite a bit in this film, but we don't at the same time. It's very focused in Russia. But there is some other, I mean, we're going to Turkey. Obviously, we're in Istanbul. Big part of that with Karim Bey. Most of the movie takes place in that area, but there is some Russian elements involved here, too. So what did you think about, like, just the travel locations in the film? Yeah, I thought it was cool how it opened up to Venice mm. and, like, the guys on the boat and everything. And then it pans like you see bond and then it pans to uh like three women talking mm -hmm. and they're all speaking in italian to each other mm -hmm. and then you watch tatiana come out of the russian consulate consulate thank you um but then she goes on to speak french to the guy before she walks up but then she speaks russian mm -hmm. but then she uses an american accent with bond so it's just all like culturally very interesting i think and then you know, we go and we travel to Turkey where we see the gypsies and everything like that. And that's very like culturally prominent. Yep. And I think almost it's like progressive for its time just because it is in the 60s or it was filmed in the 60s. Yeah. And I think that's just really cool that they were able to get people of color in there and get different cultures in there. And I don't know. I just wasn't expecting that. That's a big part of these movies that you're going to see as you go on mm -hmm. is these movies were designed to take you away mm -hmm. to give you that escapism from clocking in every single day going to work and feeling that humdrum vibe and really kind of it does give you that like oh what's that place like i would like to visit that country or go see that site when i go to that city and i i feel like the the traveling and the constant like jet setting that bond does in these films plays a huge part in it because it does it takes you away it gives you that escape and that anticipation of like oh i gotta go to get there yeah so i thought the catacombs were really cool under the russian consulate that fun? yeah that was really cool and then um because we see a lot of it in like the first half of the movie or even the first like two-thirds of the movie i would say and then they're just on the train for a good chunk of it yeah. And so you don't really see a lot of it, but I did like the part where they stopped and the helicopter was chasing him because you get to see all of like the mountains and like the, the beauty of like Little Europe. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that was really pretty. Yeah, it was a really, really pretty scene. And it's a great action scene too, because you get to see him again, utilize that suitcase. Yeah. That, that brief, sorry, that briefcase. <laughs> And he pulls that sniper rifle out. Oh, yeah. And he pops the, you know, so yeah, there, there's a lot of cool elements to this film. And that's why it is one of the most beloved in the franchise. It really is. Like when a lot of people say, what's your favorite Sean Connery? There are a lot of people that lean towards From Russia With Love because it checks a lot of boxes. Okay, so final wrap up. What are your final thoughts? Let's give it a final score. And if you want to go in more detail and say what you liked, what you didn't, you can. But what is your final score? Gen Z versus James <laughs> Bond. I think, honestly, last time I was maybe too generous with Dr. No, not because I think it's a bad movie. Like, and I want to make that clear. Like, I did enjoy Dr. No. I think for me, it was just a little bit slower mm. um, because it's almost world building, especially if you are brand new like me. Like, it is setting the stage of who James Bond is. And like, you know, there's a lot of... Um, Character introduction. Exactly. Yeah. And I think that for the storyline, the plot... It's just a little bit slower than From Russia With Love. So I think I would give Dr. No maybe like a six. 
Okay. A gonna, six and a half. We're going to drop Dr. No down on the yeah, rankings. I'll, I'll, I'll adjust that. Um, And then I think I would give From Russia With Love like a seven. Maybe like okay. a 7.5. So, okay. Yeah. Like I, I liked it better, but I'm like still wanting to see growth. But it was a good movie. I really enjoyed it. Okay. Um. I honestly didn't expect to because I knew it was going to be a little bit more like action-y, mm -hmm. but I liked the action. It like made sense for the plot line and I was like pleasantly surprised. Yes. And I think you're going to be, if you're giving From Russia With Love a 7.5 and we're going to lock it at a 7.5. Okay. Yeah. So we're officially locking it. Yep. Dr. Knows a six. We're not moving anymore after no, today. We're not. <laughs> so if you really like this one, you're giving this a 7.5, wait until you get to Goldfinger. And guys, that is our next video coming out. So make sure you stop back to the channel. If you've enjoyed this video, I definitely appreciate a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. I'm going to leave links to the videos here I was talking about with Rosa Klebb. Check that out too. That's my villain series. And we're going to get back to that one as well, which we're diving into. That's right. Two more videos coming now on Goldfinger, but it makes sense. It's the 60th anniversary of Goldfinger. So more to come here. She's going to be back. Thank you for being here, Alexis. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. It's been a good time. I'm glad you're enjoying these. I am, I'm really enjoying doing these too. All right, guys. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, Merry Christmas, 007. Bye. I would so I think the moment that shocked me the most is when um, the main woman, Tanya, when she turned on Clip. Is there any other names you'd like me to rub bad you real quick so you're on phone? Yeah. Okay. I was going to say, like, okay. number five. <laughs> Well, you, could, you could have said that. That's fine. That sounds silly. No, that's fine. It's a, actually, I might just leave this in. <laughs> Sometimes when you first watch a film, you don't remember every character's name by heart. I'm so fast. I know. So it's Rosa Klebb. Okay. Was she was the main uh, villain for Spectre? She was the Captain theme. Klebb. That's what I was. Colonel thinking. Klebb. Colonel. Yep. Not Captain America. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, Colonel Club. Yeah. Uh, Rosa Club. Yep. Uh, or number five, yes. So. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay. Okay. You want to start this over? Yeah. Okay. Take two. Squim, yeah.